Good morning. Uh, my name is Doug Smith, which you may know that by now given uh, my YouTube account and website, but I'm here in Boulder City, Nevada doing another video. Uh, this time on uh, current probes again. Uh, I did a video a few days ago uh, showing which end of the coax to put the terminations on for, co for current probe to change its frequency response. However, I didn't explain at that time what we're doing to change the frequency response. I thought I would do this now. And probably we should have done this one first, but here we go. So let's look here at the uh, arrangement we have. Similar to what we did uh, in the earlier video, we have an uh, oscillator running about 5 megahertz or so. And I'm just taking the output through a 50 ohm resistor through the current probe back to the oscillator ground. So we're getting about a 40 milliamp square wave. And we have um, the Fisher F33-1 current probe. We have some terminations that we're going to use. These are resistors, just 50 ohms, that go between the center pin and the shield. So there's four of them. If I put this on the end of the coax, 4 times 50 in parallel with the 50 from the scope gives me 5 times 50 in parallel, which gives me about 10 ohms on the probe. So before we actually do it, let's see what that does. Get over here onto our little pad. So if we make the assumption the current probe doesn't affect the circuit much, which most of the time is a good assumption, then the equivalent circuit for the current probe is a voltage source of MDIDT, where the DI is DT is the current in the wire we're measuring, mutual inductance from that wire to the probe output. So that's the voltage source. Then we have a series inductor, which is the internal inductance of the current probe, the, the coil on the core of the current probe. And we'll neglect the resistance of that winding because it, it's slow enough that we don't have to think about it most of the time. Then we're going to put a 50 ohm oscilloscope here on the end of a 50 ohm cable. Um, so to get the output voltage, we take this voltage here times this voltage divider here. And uh, now I could just take this, multiply by this, and do a little math, but engineers often, especially MC engineers, they, they don't really like to multiply. They'd rather take logs and add. So let's do that. Let's take the, the log of this, the log of, of this source, the log of this uh, voltage divider, and once we do that, we can uh, add them. So let's look down here. We've got a log amplitude versus log frequency plot, which sometimes is called a Bode plot, B-O-D-E. And if I just look at this component, MDIDT, it's, it's this line going up, and it keeps going up at 20 dB per decade. Because M and DI are the same, but DT keeps getting smaller, so it's just 20 dB per decade straight up. This function here, the voltage divider, is really a low-pass filter. At low frequencies, it doesn't provide any attenuation at all, but when the reactance 2 pi FL of this inductor equals 50, then we get the cutoff. So that, that's a function that comes up, going 20 dB per decade up, until it hits this corner frequency, the LR, and now we have MDIDT trying to go up, and this low-pass filter trying to go down at 20 dB per decade, and it, since the logs were going to add them, it just goes flat. So it goes up to some point and goes flat like that. Depending on the design of the probe, this frequency will vary. Now, what happens if I put a, another 50 ohm load here to make it 25, for example? So that doesn't change this at all. This line stays the same. But now, 2 pi FL of the inductor, the reactance, needs only to get to 25 before I get this cutoff. So what happens is I come up here to half the original frequency, and then I it goes flat from there. So we get one half the sensitivity, but we're flat to half the frequency. We can exchange sensitivity for low frequency response. That's just a first order approximation. There's a lot of other things that can come in here. Uh, for one, I'm assuming we're using a current probe that's just a transformer, that it doesn't have some internal built-in network here, and some of them do. I'm also not thinking too much about the core characteristics uh, if it's a lossy core, that complicates things a little bit. But this is a good first-order approximation. So, if everything goes well, when I put on that uh, 10 ohm load instead of 50, this should get a lot smaller, and it should be flat to a lower frequency. Let's see if that actually happens. So, here's our test setup here. Uh, don't yet have the termination on. Let's turn, the, turn on the oscillator. 
and we'll go over here now and take a peek at the scope pattern and as before we're using a Tektronix MD 4104B6 oscilloscope uh, and I'm using this uh, old PC monitor just to make it big so it fills the screen so um, you can see this is the 40 milliamp step coming out of the uh, oscillator square wave but I'm at a low enough frequency it doesn't look very flat we're drooping down to maybe half of the initial and that's because I'm near the low frequency cutoff of the current probe itself the uh, um, the response of the probe it just isn't, isn't uh, there at low frequencies so I'd really like to, to get a better representation for instance if I wanted to use this probe which starts cutting off at a few megahertz what if I want to look at lightning currents or something uh, which is well below megahertz what do I do well, I could buy a new current probe, of course, but what if we did this? Take this off here, and if you remember from the last video, this termination used to be on this end, not the scope end, otherwise we get an, uh, a, a mistermination and reflections and all kinds of problems. But if we put it over here, we don't, because the scope is still terminating the other end of the cable with 50 ohms. So now we've got 10 ohm load in the scope, 4 times 50, and another 50 in parallel at the, in the transmission line here. So let's see what that looks like. Well, has stopped triggering because I need to bring the trigger level down to where I can see it. Now, notice it's a lot smaller than it was. Um, this used to be a 10 millionth tradition. Four division is high. Now it's, um, a, well, let's see if we can see exactly how much it is. Let's bring that down here. It looks like one and a half. Just not exactly five to one uh, from four, but this is an older probe, has a lossy core, and that complicates things a little bit. But you can always calibrate it yourself after you do this by a measurement like this. Now, let me crank the oscilloscope sensitivity up, to get it back up a little bit to like the, maybe the size it used to be. Uh, there were four divisions high now again, and you notice that it's not it's not as droopy as it used to be. We're much better than we were. I could go lower than 10 ohms. I could go to 1 ohm, so, uh, sacrifice more sensitivity, and still get flatter frequency response. Probably when you start getting less than an ohm, though, I start beginning to worry about the resistance of the wire in the current probe. And that would form, uh, if I have a 1 ohm load in the output, I might get a voltage divider of that resistance, and the coil resistance might complicate things a little bit. But again, you could measure it and see what it is on any given probe, and then you'll know. So, there we go, that was our description, and our little test set up here. So, uh, there we go, back into focus here. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. Maybe sometime you can come visit me at the Boulder Dam Hotel for a course, or even just a visit, or maybe, if you like, we can go out for a nice 110 degree run in the desert. You know, five or ten miles would be good. Okay, thank you. Just a word uh, on all these demonstrations of things I've been doing here. You may have seen my website, www.dsmith.org will get you there, or emcest.com. Be careful to spell it correctly because there's some sites out there that are doing a misspelling on my website to get you to theirs. So it's emcest.com and uh, so you'll see about 300 articles and papers there that I publish plus the videos I'm doing here but all of this is just the the tip of the iceberg uh, I love doing experiments and writing them up that's where the website came from but I also do a lot of research whenever I'm not doing active work for a client I'm doing research finding new ways to troubleshoot and uh, circuits and systems and new ways to even design them and uh, not all of that is in the website or these videos so the best stuff that I do, I hold off for a few years for my customers, and then eventually I'll, I'll publish them. So uh, if you'd like to come to one of my courses um, or engage me in consulting, then uh, you'll see some of the new stuff. But uh, thanks for watching these videos, and maybe I can see you here either virtually or uh, in person. Per in person we get it better, but we'd probably have to wait a little bit for that.